vote. Just four little letters, yet they are the most important four letters in the United States. With a major election just around the corner, let's talk about that four-letter word. Under the Constitution of the United States, every citizen 18 years old and older has the right to vote. That right is only suspended for just cause, too. Under the law, only convicted felons may lose the right to vote in U.S. elections. As of this year, most states have a policy for restoring voting rights to most convicted felons once their sentence and supervision is completed. That means that over 255 million Americans are old enough to vote, and at least 245 million of them have the right to vote. Now, registration is necessary to be able to vote, and in 2020, a total of 152,666,000 of those eligible to vote were registered to vote. Why there should be nearly 100 million Americans eligible to vote but not registered to vote is beyond me, as voting is both a civic duty and a civic responsibility. But as I thought about the statistic, it occurred to me, People eligible to vote who don't register to vote are still voting, in a way. No, I'm not talking about voter fraud. I'm talking about voting without casting a ballot. The vote of the unregistered voter is that they don't care what happens in American politics. They don't care who writes their laws or enforces them, and they don't care who sits on the benches judging their cases. That's their right, of course, but refusing to register to vote when you are eligible to vote to me means that you are leaving what you can and cannot do in the hands of others. Do you really enjoy other people telling you what to do? As for those who do register, voter turnouts average about 60% in a presidential election, 50% in a midterm national election, 30% or less in most primary elections, and even less than that for most state and local elections. That means that everyone who is registered and doesn't cast a ballot is joining with the unregistered voters to say, I don't care, you pick. Do you really trust my judgment so much that you would let me decide for you if a sales tax referendum should pass? How about who should be the party nominee for president? Do you really want to leave that up to me? That brings us to those who do vote. In the 2016 presidential election, that was something over 136 million people. They did their duty, sure, but did they meet their responsibility? Did they educate themselves on candidates and issues? Did they make sure that they didn't vote in favor of someone or something that they would not have supported if they had understood what was at stake? Folks, voting is important. The results of the 2016 presidential election were 62 million votes and 304 electors for Trump, 65 million votes and 227 electors for Clinton, about 9 million votes and 7 electors for other people, and about 110 million votes for, I don't care, you pick the president. The solution is pretty simple, though. If you are eligible to vote, then register to vote. Tell the world that you care what happens in our country. If you are registered to vote, then vote. Cast a ballot and let the world know that you voiced your opinion on the candidates and issues. If you don't register, then you don't really have a voice. If you are registered and don't vote, then while you may have the right to speak on the issues, you really don't have a right to bitch about politics, because you gave up that right when you skipped your chance to vote. Absentee balloting makes sense for those who can't get to the polls in person. The elderly, the infirm, those away and unable to return to cast their vote, like the military. Other than that, though, voting by mail makes no sense. What you are saying is that your time is too precious to spend a few hours standing in line. Your ballot is much more likely to be challenged because of this, meaning that your vote may not be counted. And yes, for the sake of those who protest that absentee ballots aren't counted if the election isn't close, every properly completed ballot received in accordance with local election laws must be counted by law. Elections have hinged on absentee ballots before. In my lifetime, I've seen elections so close that which candidate won hinged on a few hundred votes out of millions. So, if you really can't get to the polls, learn how to vote by absentee ballot and do it. Get out there and vote, people. Voting isn't just your right, it's your duty to the country and a sacred responsibility in a democratic republic.